go on this journey of distance learning and you have stepped up and taken a risk when it comes to uh, e-learning and distance learning. And that is fantastic. And ETFO Waterloo definitely wanted to uh, help you in getting those skills because we know sometimes even with the great training that they do with uh, ed tech, that ed tech group, or even through the board or through the ministry, um, it doesn't always come trickle down quite to the same level as it does with a local, with local leaders, local facilitators who really do understand the lingo that we use here in Waterloo, the structures in our system. So I'm very pleased that we've been able to offer these to our members and uh, the uptake has been massive. So I am going to start this meeting by reading our Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario um, Human Rights Statement and our local First Nation Métis and Inuit uh, Territorial Land Acknowledgement. The Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario is committed to providing an environment that is free from harassment and discrimination at all provincial or local federation sponsored activities, fostering the goodwill and trust necessary to protect the rights of all individuals within the organization, uh, neither tolerating nor condoning behavior that undermines the dignity or self-esteem of individuals or the integrity of relationships, promoting mutual, promoting mutual respect, understanding and cooperation as the basis of interaction among all members. Harassment and discrimination on the basis of a prohibited ground or violations of the Ontario Human Rights Code and are illegal. The Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario will not tolerate nor condone any form of harassment or discrimination as defined by the Ontario Human Rights Code at provincial or local federation sponsored activities. And in honor of our commitment to truth and reconciliation and to pave a new path built on peace and friendship. The Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario Waterloo region, region acknowledges that our local is situated on the Haldeman Tract. This territory was promised to the Six Nations by way of the Haldeman Treaty of 1784 and is also the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Neutral Peoples. Today, it continues to be home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We are grateful for the use of this land so we may continue our work even when it's online today. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you Kelly and Amanda, who are going to take it away and lead you through a uh, wee video. Looking forward to it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know that Amanda started to screen share. Um, just looking to see where the results are. Amanda, we're at 64% What's We video, just so you are aware. Perfect. So we're just trying to figure out where everyone's at so it will guide our process just like any good teachers we kind of tailor, tailor it to you guys um, and I am camera shy and I don't often look at the camera so just so you are aware. Go ahead Manny, you got it. <laughs> um, you might need to mute your microphone when you're not on and delivery people come always when we're trying to record something. Here we go. So we are, I'm Amanda Fuller and my partner Kelly Ernest, we are grade five, six teachers at Grove Public School. Uh, we jumped into the pilot uh, with We Video in December and our students started dabbling with it first because we just believe if we're gonna incorporate new technology, the best way to do it is to all jump in there together. And it was only once my students got super excited about the creation and editing possibilities there that we realized that this was maybe gonna be a really great tool for us. And then through some online courses that I was taking, I was able to play around with it and, and use this as a tool just to see what it is that it can do. Um, we found that our media creation um, had gone down significantly just because we got more Chromebooks for students to use at the junior and intermediate level. It meant the, the iPads were going to the primary classrooms and we had primarily been using iPads when it came to content creation. And so by having we video, it is something that is supported by the board. It is something that works on our board Chromebooks, which is kind of the big deal with this one is they can um, do screen casting from it. They can capture um, content and their own video using the web camera. They can upload some of their own pictures. Um, and incorporate those all into media projects they're, they're using, which is why we think right now, this is a fantastic opportunity for us to be jumping in and just playing around with this tool during the COVID season. The other benefit that we have found to using this, and you saw this video playing while you first logged on, and some of you came in and wondered what was going on, um, is just the different ways that we have been using WeVideo in order to bring our faces and our voices to our students 
in the distance learning classroom so that they can see us, so that they can hear us, so that we can personalize content to them. And that's really helped us to maintain engagement where a lot of people have been talking about engagement going down. And so we've had weekly update videos each week. We've had daily questions that we pose to our students and then they interact online and comment on each other's thinking to create that sort of classroom environment. Um, sometimes just oral instructions. I'm gonna let Kelly talk about that here in a second. And answering access questions. When we get those parents um, or students emailing us saying, we can't access this, how do you get into this? We've discovered that it's actually really quick and easy to jump in, do a quick screencast and send off that link um, or that attachment in the email. And then they can see exactly in their own Google Classroom how they're supposed to tap in and get to that. So I'm gonna let Kelly um, just talk for a quick and moment about how she's using it to give instructions for some of our bigger projects. Um, so for some of our bigger projects, I found even writing the instructions, as you know, most students don't like to read instructions or even, you know, follow the instruction set. Um, I thought I found it easier if I could actually screencast using my voice and saying here, step one, step two, step three, and then they go, I don't get it. But well, did you listen to the instructions? No. So then that's my go to. So it's easier because it, it hits the audio learners that we have in our classrooms, which is really beneficial. And it also has those readers too. So I use it for everything I give is it has an oral instruction plus a written component. So um, before we move on any further, I will also point out down here at the bottom of each slide, we have the bit.ly link, and this is going to take you to, um, if it's not currently shared, I didn't double check my share settings before we started, if it's not currently shared, then it will be shared, um, this slide deck that we're currently using, so that if you wanted to go back and double check any of the videos that we've shared in here, or any of the things that we've included in the slides, you have the ability to do that. So bit.ly slash we video relationships. Um, and again, there are lots of videos online. There's lots of tutorials that we've jumped into. And um, the power that we found in using this is the students know us. We have built that relationship and that understanding. And so to continue to build off of that, um, we feel has been really important. So we want to offer you an opportunity um, to access this in one of two ways today. One, you might just watch what we're doing here for the hour and watch some of our little promo videos and come back and tackle it after this is all over when you can slow it down and do it at your own pace. For some of you, you're gonna be comfortable clicking between having multiple screens open and flip-flopping back and forth between Zoom um, and our uh, WeVideo window that might be open in a web browser. And so we're gonna have little opportunities for you to actually create something by the end of this hour that you could use in your own classroom or at least to have access to seeing what types of things might be created and how you begin to use this tool. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a two minute timer here for those who want to open up a window and you're gonna log on to WeVideo. You will sign in with your board account and you're actually just gonna create a new video file and check out what it looks like here. So, I'm going to just bring our music there so that if you are in another browser, you know when that music comes to an end that um, we're coming to an end. For those of you who are just kind of watching as we go, um, what you have the ability to do right now is stop and ask some questions. So if you wanted to use the chat feature, if there's a very specific thing that you're hoping we'll address in this seminar, please fire that to us in, in the chat session and that'll allow us to direct ourselves there. So here on the screen, you can see that when you go to WeVideo, you are actually going to use your WRBSB account um, because the board has licensed this. And you're going to go in, create a new project, and start under, save it under the file, my, my project. That's all you need to get started. And then once that's there, you can actually start to look at some of the other um, tabs that are there. We will discuss those coming in. Um, there are some great media options that we're also going to point your attention to. Um, but once you have that logged in, you could create 
like I said, a daily question, a math prompt, or just keep it simple and say, you know what, I'm just gonna create a little 10 second welcome, I'm gonna introduce myself video. I'm going to answer one of the questions that came up, Amanda, um, how it's different from Screencastify or Vidyard. Screencastify and Vidyard are not um, promoted by our board. WeVideo is promoted by your, our board. And what happens with this one, you can Screencastify right into WeVideo and do all your edits right there and right then and add little pieces to it. Uh, hopefully, question Tara or Tara? Got about 15 more seconds. Um, Shelly, I see that you're having some, you just have to type in Wii Video on any Google browser and it should take you to the login um, and log into the Wii Video. So just type in Wii Video um, and that should work. The Google search will be perfect, Angela. I would, let's give a few, just a few more minutes, Amanda, because they're... Yep, absolutely. Google. and use your credentials from the school board. I'm just gonna dance to some of the stills here. In answer to Janet, yes, it's very easy to email out. Once you export your video, you can just send it right out to the kids. You can forward it on. That's how Amanda and I often share and reshare. Angel's asking us to wait. Yep, absolutely. So again, for those of you who are watching who are not trying to tap into this right away, um, you'll notice on the screen immediately comes up create new and you can just create a new video um, in order to just start with a blank slate. And that will allow you to do some of your own recording or bring in some images that you have in your Google Drive um, or somewhere else. There are, when you get a little bit further along or depending on your starting point, there are some templates here. Um, both Kelly and I found that the templates are maybe a little bit overwhelming when you're first coming in, depending on your tech comfort levels, um, because it comes in with multiple layers and a whole bunch of things that you're supposed to click on and replace. But again, it all depends on what your comfort level is when it comes to dealing with these tools. Okay, it looks like we're good, Amanda. Fabulous. So. The next stage, once you have started your document and you've clicked on that video, uh, create new video, and you actually get into start editing, the next thing that you want to know how to do is to import um, images. And so in the top left-hand corner, there is a little thing that says import. The great thing about importing the images is that you can do this from Google Drive. You can import images off of Facebook or Dropbox or Flickr. Um, but then there's also, in the top corner, just above the import, import, there is a whole bank of stock media here from dynamic video files that are moving in the background that you can just search according to a keyword, um, or a whole bunch of just um, still images that you can pop into your presentations as well. So between Kelly and I, we use a combination of images that we wanted to create, um, images of assignments that we want like our to share. like our bitmojis, our screen yes. screen shares, and all of that are imported into right into WeVideo. Or sometimes with our daily question, if we knew that we were going to ask kids about spring, I know I don't have to go onto the internet because something like spring is something is something that is generally searchable that we can just go into stock images and it will have things there so that I don't have to go through the hassle of saving them to my computer or saving them to my drive and importing it. So I'm gonna just show this video here and we're gonna talk through it as it goes. So, importing. The highlight of this is that you're bringing in your own images and your own videos. And we'll give you a chance to, again, check this out and play with it. If you're on your own computer and you have them saved right on your hard drive, you can access the hard drive uh, by uploading an image. And when it has these little blue um, lines underneath, it means it's processing that image. So whether it's actually an image or whether it's a video file, um, I'm going to just pause that back here for a second because that's really important to be able to recognize. 
when this blue ribbon is moving, it's there, but it hasn't finished processing. So even if you drag it into your editing screen, it may not sound right, the audio might be off, the image might be a little bit glitchy. It doesn't mean that it's broken. It just means that you need to double check if it's finished loading. Usually images and really short little video clips are processed in 10 seconds, for sure less than a minute. Or if you're doing um, telling a story, and it's gonna be a 10 or 15 minute video, then you might have to wait two or three minutes in order for that to finish processing. So do not freak out if you see that, that's all that it means is that it's loading up. I'm gonna answer just Amelia's question. I believe she's asking how do you import from YouTube? I'm not too sure that YouTube, you can download the videos from YouTube, but because of copyright, I'm not too sure that they are the most feasible to use. I'd have to well, check with. And the other thing, so, if you recognize this timer, um, I took that from YouTube, um, and I just screencast that so that I could layer it into the document that I wanted to use right now. So again, in terms of if you're actually producing content and you're wanting to put it out there on YouTube yourself, um, then I would be careful about what you're pulling off of YouTube because of those copyright issues. If it's something that you're using with your own classroom, um, then sometimes you just want to point their attention to something or you want to use a, a small little segment and again screen casting by pulling that up and then saying what we're going to capture this screen over here then that allows you to do that so again this is going through so now you have an opportunity again ask some questions or go back into your own video file and use that import or check out some of the stock images and Maybe capture one or two that might work for whatever you're doing, whether it's your daily question, your math question, or your little introduction for yourself. My screen is all black with a green box in front of it. I'm not sure I can see the screen share properly. So if someone's having trouble seeing your screen, Amanda. Okay. I'm just not too sure if it's on our end or her end. I don't know if Jeff can help us out with that one. So um, there should be there should be next to the your next to Kelly's face right now. There should be two lines that if you click it, you can drag Kelly uh, to be a little bit bigger or the screen to be a little bit smaller, um, vice versa. That's how you would fix it. So it's on the actual person's end, not our end. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I mean, I can, I'm going to um, jump on here and share my screen because there's some people wanting to know about stock media and stuff. Absolutely. So that we can model some of, some of this a little bit and let's practice this. Okay, um, so I am looking at the screen just like you guys are and someone asked about stock media. Stock media is up at the very top. It's got a star beside it. If you click that, then you get all, you've got my favorites right now, which is what I was going to model just a second. But you can type in any um, search there that you want. So I'm looking up elephants. And there's all the elephant pictures that Stock Media has. Again, if you ha see a timer on it, that means it's a dynamic video. Um, and if you just see one with just plain at the bottom, I'm just going to scroll, scroll, scroll. Those are not dynamic, they're just images. And you can drop it right into your video. That's the stock image. I know that. Uh, okay, so I hopefully answered Anita. And I've got Aaron and Christina there. Um, I'm hoping. Um, so that so I just I'm going to continue looking for so I can model what I was going to create. So I'm creating a daily question. I need an elephant. I also have let's see, I wanted a dolphin picture. Nope, I can't even spell dolphin either. It's uh, afternoon, obviously. So then I can take a dynamic picture of a dolphin and I can drop that in there as well. Um, what else do I need? I needed um, an eagle. And Kelly, if you could show as well, right beside stock media, 
is my media and my media is where you're going to go in order to find the importing images it comes up um, automatically when you first log on to the screen but if you start clicking through some of the other tabs that's how you get back to importing so again the my media tab that's where you'll import images from that's where you will find that record button which we're going to get to in just a minute here yeah so i've put i've you can organize all your um media that you've organized in more organized imported into folders which just makes it easier for me and or um, organized but this is a bitmoji i just uh, downloaded just before um, we started it's just so we could use it um, and again you click and it's a drag and drop system if that's any help um, i haven't tried slideshows caroline um, i'm not too sure um, i'm assuming so i don't know if we can just click through it though I think it'd have to be slide by slide. Would you think, Amanda? For sorry, which one? I was just slide, uh, 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 importing a slideshow. Um, in turn, so the best thing to do if you're if you have things set up in a slideshow is going to be when you record is to record that specific tab because then you can go through the slideshow. Um, when you want to, right within Google Slides, there are some options about. Um, recording through or um, publishing that slideshow to the web in a different format. But if you wanted to add other commentary outside of uh, Google Slides itself, if you wanted to use Weave Video to be layering some other images on top of that or titles or whatever else, um, the ability to do it is there, but you would want to screencast that, which again, we're going to get to here in a moment. So I think we're just about ready to, yeah. I'll take back over the. So we're going to talk about the difference between screencasting um, webcam and doing okay. a dual between the Can, two. Someone's asking us to go back and slow it down a little bit. For sure. So let's go back to my screen, Amanda. Okay. Okay. So Rebecca's asking for us to go simpler. So let me just start real simple and we'll go from basic. Okay, so what I wanna create is I wanna create a daily question. Very simple, I'm in, um, I'm in stock media. I want my question to be about eagles. So I've typed in eagle. I found a picture. I am going to click it and I'm going to drag it down that and that's all we're doing right now so just we're just importing those images so people can um, practice that i know that someone just asked about a bitmoji basically i have to, you have to download it to your computer and then import it back up um and i can put so my bitmojis are here i can just quickly show you can you everyone see that Amanda? can you see that one still yep we can so i can click on my bitmoji i can right click it and i save my image i save my image it goes to the question, I save it, and now it's on my computer. Or go back up to the top and I want to import, I'm gonna get rid of my Bitmoji, hopefully. When I don't, I want my media. I'm going to import and I can drag this right in. Now you're dragging because you're working from your home computer. In order to present, we did not want to rely on our Chromebooks just because we were nervous about them crashing with us trying to use video files and presenting live. Um, if you're on your computer, you can actually save it to your downloaded files and then upload it right from there. Or again, on a Chromebook, you can save it directly to Google Drive and import that image from Google Drive. Christina, um, you'll need to open a project and start a brand new project. Um, so I've imported the, a video, uh, a picture, Rebecca, and then I'm going to import this one as well. And that's all. So hopefully you can try it if that helps, Rebecca. So if you want to take a, two, a minute or so to see if you can import a picture or you can take an image from stock media and bring it down to just the video one is what I'm going to suggest. Video one is where you want everything to be at the moment. There are multiple layers when it says video one and video two. Video one is your base layer. Um, video two tends to be where we add in text when we wanted to put a title on it or throw a question in there. Um, or 
if you do a dual capture where it captures your webcam and it captures your screen, it uses both of those layers. And we're gonna show you how you can play around with what's being seen in those two layers as we go on a little bit further. And just so everyone's aware as well, we are going to post the video record or the video recording. I sound like the VHS of this, the recording <laughs> of this um, on our website as well. So if you do miss anything and you want to go back and watch it, it's just going to be a very simple video that you can just click play and rewatch and rewind till your heart's content. So don't worry too much about that if you miss something. Perfect. All right. We're going to move on. Um, if you wanted to listen in the background, um, if you minimize the, the Zoom screen, it'll usually give you a little mini um, version so you see a mini box of us presenting um, that you can tap back into at any time. Uh, and that'll allow you to play as we're talking, or if you wanted, you can watch and then go back and try some of this afterwards. Okay, so. When it comes to um, the difference between the different types of recordings. So right beside the import images was the option to record. And when you go to hit record, it's gonna give you three different options. One is that it's gonna access your webcam. And the first time that you click on that, you're gonna have to give WeVideo permission to use your webcam. Um, and then after that, you should be good to go. It won't ask every time. And a webcam image is going to be your face. And so it's actually going to ask you, in case you have multiple cameras hooked up to your device, it'll ask you which one you want to use, but it will go with your default. So it'll go with your Chrome um, or computer webcam. The integrated webcam is what it says. And then when it comes to what you're using for your audio, if you have a headset plugged in, you can use that drop down menu in order to, to click on the, web, the headset. Every time that I record, it automatically wants to go to the default microphone on my computer. So if I wanted to use something else to make sure it was more clear, then I just have to choose that. And then I can go in and it'll ask me to choose um, if I'm ready to start editing or if I'm ready to start recording. The second option that you have is just your screen. So some people are really nervous for privacy sake about not putting their face out there, but even just having a screen of your own Google Classroom to show students how to access something, even your own voice recording um, over top of that, talking them through. You don't have to have your face on your, um, on your Google Classroom or out there for students in order for it to build off of that relationship. You just want to have some of those components that are going to make it as personal as possible so that your students are seeing you and seeing their classroom and seeing their materials so that it helps to contextualize it for them and helps them feel like this isn't just randomly for anybody who taps in. This is for us. This is for our class. And so the screen cast has been really helpful for me as I'm explaining some math problems. Um, here is an example where I put my math up um, screenshot of the problem up on a Jamboard. And then I was able just to use some of the editing tools and show students the thinking as, as it went through. And so um, that's helpful if you wanted to show them, like Kelly had said earlier, how to access the library learning commons, how to access certain um, projects or assignments that you put up there. Screencasting is really great because as you're talking through it, the students can see what you're talking about and it doesn't rely on them having to read, especially for our, our ESL learners and our students who struggle with reading um, and understanding information on their own. This just gives you a chance so that they can see it, so that they can possibly hear you talking through it. And when you do a screencast, it also asks you if you would like to use no audio at all. You can turn all audio off, or you can choose to use your microphone on your computer or a headset or something else so that you can talk over top of that. And then of course you click next and you'd continue on with that recording. It does give you a countdown. It does give you the option of showing your entire screen with all your gazillion tabs open. Or if you only want to select one screen, you don't want the students to see the rest of what's on your screen, you can just click one tab and say, I just want to show them that Jamboard or I just want to show them that Google slide um, and so that they don't see the rest of your computer. 
And then of course there are some instances where you might want to show them something that's on your screen and get a webcam capture. It doesn't mean that you have to have both of those images displayed the whole time. But what it does mean is that it's going to capture those two things in sync and it's going to throw it up there on your editing board with those two things in sync and then you can cut it and say, oh, at this point, I just want to focus on the, the video of me. At this other point, I want to go back. And so again, with something like stories, and I attended the library learning uh, commons workshop yesterday, and there are a lot of resources available online that you wouldn't even have to take pictures of books in order to read them. You might be able to just pull it up directly from the library learning commons, have that screen chosen as your screencast, and you can be reading it off of your screen and they're beautiful images to use. And then your face is there in order to ask, demonstrate reading strategies um, as you're going through. Or demonstrate research skills for some nonfiction things depending on what you're tapping into for science or social studies as well. Any other questions right now, Kelly? People want to show no to uh, where that is. So can I'm going to take over the screen. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, we're back into your video. Um, people are asking where that is. There's a couple of different ways to get here. The simplest way is to go up beside an import and your record button is right there. And there's your options webcam screen. If I click on, click on webcam, and I'm not too sure it's going to work because my computers are being used, but we'll try. It's not allowed because I'm using one of them. Um, but that's where you'll find that. I can use my screen easily. Next, um, my microphone is on my camera that I'm using, or you can do no audio. And I have a list of them, I apologize. And this is where you choose where you want to screen from. So if I wanted to screen, um, screencast what I'm doing right now, I would click my entire screen. Application windows, if you're using um, a specific tool like um, Word or anything like that, that would be what I would use it for, um, or a Chrome tab. And it comes up with a list of tabs that you have that are open. And the great thing about this, it, it takes you directly there. So if I am clicking on to this tab and I want to share it, this is I'm screencasting right now as I'm in um, our webinar. This is where you'd find um, the Wii video. You click here, you log in. With your Google and again my Chrome, my computer is a little slow and then you can hit stop. And notice that it actually told you this is the screen you're sharing or this is the tab that you're sharing and the little stop button is there. As soon as you click that stop button then it's going to throw you back to this preview video where you can either look at it ahead of time, decide if you want to save that or if you know that you messed something up or you watch it and decide you need to redo it, you can just record again and it doesn't even bother saving that that file. And then if I do happen to hit save, it takes it and it adds it right into the video that I'm currently working on. Right. Can you just go through those steps one more time? So again, the starting point for this, you are in my media. My media is where you're going to end up dwelling a lot of the times when you're using this. And when you click my media, record comes up as an option. You get to choose what is it that you want to record from. I know I can't use my webcam. Choosing where your microphone is if you have one in the headset or what computer um, default always works is the uh, microphone from your computer and then hit next. I'm going to, last time I did a tab this time I'm going to do my entire screen so you'll see all the tabs that are open within my screen and it counts it down. So the question here, generally for screencasting, would you pick screen or dual? Again, it depends. So if I'm reading something and demonstrating grading strategies where I want to be able to, I'm not worried about putting my face out there um, with my students in our Google Classroom. So where I want to actually look at the camera and reach out to them and engage my students, um, I will do both because I know that at any time, if I wanted to cut out part of the video of me, I can easily cut that out and we're going to get to that in editing. Or if I wanted to just focus on my part of the video, I can get rid of the screencast part of that. And so when I'm reading a book, doing this reading strategy, something like that, 
I will use both of them because then it, it records side by side. But then there are other things where I know my screen is going to be filled with a math strategy that we're looking at. They don't actually need to see my face for this one. They're okay to, to hear my voice. And so then I might just choose the screen recording um, and leave my video out of it just because it's one last thing that I have to add it. So. And I choose usually not to show my face. I usually just choose to use my voice. Um, question asked about where to um, name or save the title of your video. If you go up to the little um, waffle hamburger, whatever you want to call it, depending on which country or what program you're using, you can click it right there and it's save. Save or save as, or you can actually click on the thing that says my video at the top and that's another quick way to change the title of your video and to rename it so that not all of the videos you produce are called my video. Because then you won't be able to find it just like in Google Docs. Um, someone asked about um, the Learning Commons book, Amanda. How did you so get if, if you hold on, we'll come back around to that um, hopefully a little bit later. And if not later, then, um, then I might be able to connect with you uh, outside of this. This is one of those things, we're going through a lot of material quickly. I did a much worse version of this with my staff team when we first launched into um, distance learning. And for some of them, they just needed to see the tool and know that there were possibilities there, but start super basic. And for some of them, it was two weeks later, three weeks later when they said, okay, I know that you did this in the, in the webinar before, how do I do that? Because I wasn't ready for that learning yet, but I'm ready for it now. So again, it's another great reason why taking that bit.ly link, making a copy of the presentation, um, taking Kelly and my contact information, we're more than happy to help you through something if there's something very specific that you want to be able to do that we didn't get a chance to do or that you weren't ready for yet when you participated in this webinar. Your microphone is off, Kelly. I'm, I'm go ahead and with the rest of the next slide, I'm going to just answer some questions and hopefully that will leave some. Perfect. Okay. So the time flies when you're in editing the first couple of videos that you end up producing. Like I said, keep it small, keep it simple while you're experimenting. Um, but then it gets a lot faster from there. Once you get comfortable with it, you don't have to add in all sorts of fancy tools because again, this is just a way for you to communicate effectively and quickly with your students. All right, so Kelly started to look at um, editing titles, editing background, doing some transitions. And so actually, Kelly, this is going to be, are you going to take over for this part of it? On mute. <laughs> there we go. Am I on mute? No, I'm not mute. Yes, I can take over for you from now. Um, okay, and I'll go to answering the questions. Sorry there's a couple that. of questions about screencasting as well as some um, exporting, which is coming up, just so you yeah. know. Yep. Okay. Um, back to me. Um, you'll see the side of my face because I have double screens here. I apologize, um, but it's easier to do it this way. Okay, so um, as we asked you to do, we asked you to plop some media into your video. What do you want you wanted to create? I know that at the beginning, someone asked about gym video, uh, gym screens, if you upload your pictures and put it right down, you certainly can do that. So um, what we're doing right now is we're just going to create a very quick video. I have all the images, including my screencast, so we're just going to make it work for right now. Um, but I am going to move some things around. I want this at the beginning. And when I do that, um, it's going to insert, I want it to insert to push it, which allows everything to push down. Someone just asked that everything was all, like it was taking up the whole screen depending on your picture, your dynamic video, it could take up the whole screen. But if you look at this, um, at the end of this, um, it's only 19 seconds. So it may look long, but it's only 19 seconds. And I don't want it to be 19 seconds. So the very easiest thing to do is to trim that. And Amanda's much better at this, but I just kind of shrink it down. So I went from 19 seconds, so now the whole thing is only completely six seconds. Once you have a box around an image, that will allow you to do any moving, any pictures. You can kind of slide it this way and that. 
So that is how you kind of cut things down. You can also, um, this was my screencast of how to find Wii video. If I want to cut that, or I don't like a piece of it, I hit play, I pause it, I cut it, I get rid of the piece that I don't want by just hitting delete or backspace. Or the trash can. Or the trash can, I just, I usually hit delete. Um, so now we wanna add some other um, fun bits to this. Um, the fun bits, um, again, are all those ex little extras and they're um, sometimes complicated, but not. Let's start with the simplest one. Let's add some text to it. And at the top, if you click on um, right beside uh, my media, now moving into my text, you have a variety of text pieces, that, some, that are, some that are in motion, some that are still in season, and then some call outs. So if you click on it to the right in your preview screen, it'll show you exactly what it looks like. And so if we go down a little further, um, that's what it will look like. So again, it's a drag and drop system. And what we um, suggest is all of your text go on another layer. So this will go over top of everything else. And I usually use that as the top layer of my screen. So this one happens to be video too. So I'm gonna pop this, I'm gonna steal this one because I like this one. That's a note that will come up for me. It's not gonna come up for me because I'm on a timeline, of course. So that is my text box. If I play it, and now the problem is I have the words make your message stand out. Um, what I, to, to fix your message, you just double click on it. It will take you to a text area. You can change the colors um, and you can just play with that or, and you can change your message. So um, this is trial by fire. My title is going to be because that's what we're doing today and that's it comes up and you always you can change the size of it here as well you can hit save changes so now instead of saying um, make your message stand out it comes up as trial by again you probably notice that it's past where I want it to be again it's an orange box so I just can slide it down to where so that's adding text um, Audio, Amanda, too, or do you want me to do backgrounds first? Um, do the audio. Okay. Um, so we video has lots of things embedded into it. Um, I don't know if we can upload a lot of audio because of copyright stuff, but they have a fairly good selection. So we kind of um, we move move through it and through it and practice things. So right beside my media, we had text. Beside text, we had audio. Um, free music and because we're a school board we also have the premium music which is awesome and there's some sound effects as well so if you are looking for like a hospital sound let's see um, we don't want to um, so there's lots of different things there and again the same thing um, applies with it's a drag and drop system you can if you want ahead of time and at the very bottom um you have video two video one audio one you just uh, take it and you just drop it down to the bottom now the one thing um, we have noticed as we go through things um audio is really loud and i know that we've already had that comment today you can make your audio lower and softer depending on uh, what you want to do if you're talking in your video so you still have background music um, the other thing to do is if you want it to kind of fade in and out, you can also get really fancy and kind of pull things and do weird things with the blue, lovely blue line and how you want it to look. Um, and again, you notice it's probably still too long. So you can take your cutting tool and you can cut your music just as much as you cut your pictures. So now I can get rid of that one. And now I have a video of weird things today. Now we have the question asked. Um, about adding your own voice in. So if you wanted to narrate that um, and add your voice in. I certainly can. So the same thing. So um, I'm going so I'm going to go back to my media and right beside the my media piece is the narrate button. Um, you're going to click the narrate button and you're going to, um, I like to use the preview while recording. We had a discussion, Min and I had a discussion last night of what worked better. And I like to know what I'm recording and how fast I need to speak. So you can preview it so you know exactly what's on the screen when you're looking uh, and narrating, or you can just um, not see it. 
So you click, I click preview, I click the microphone, it counts you down. We are working from home and I'm so excited. It's time to go upstairs. And I hit stop. I could listen to this. I could um, play it. I'm just going to assume it's fine because, you know, it's playing by fire right now. So I hit um, check mark. And then it saves the recording. And it's now underneath and a voiceover. So if I play my entire video now, and of course, we can't hear it quite as well uh, because we're just hearing the residual sound coming through Kelly's computer. But if you're doing the editing yourself, that sound quality is going to be much better. On the shared slideshow, um, the slide that talks about the editing titles, backgrounds, transitions, it goes through all of the steps in just, I think that video is 10 minutes, and I kept that one full length just to show you. In 10 minutes, I could easily come up with a daily question that includes pictures, that shows you how to add the text, that um, goes through even the publishing part of it. And so again, if you wanted to slow it down, see what something looks like that we would actually publish on our classroom, we've incorporated that into that shared slide deck. Um, so I don't often use transitions. I'm going I'm to skip that one for just a second, Amanda. But backgrounds are also important if you want something fairly simple. Um, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to jump back to my media for just a second. No, stock media. And I want a picture, just a picture of a lovely owl, he's going here now. And we can add backgrounds above it, which is solids, overlays, and frames. I like some frames. I like the purple blob that Amanda found recently. And so now he's gonna have a purple frame around him. So you get, again, it's a click and drag system, which is um, amazing and it's not too finicky. You can also just change, you know, it's, so it's a screen art and add text instead. Um, there's lots of different things and different choices you can make there. I'm going to actually take my owl out and I'm going to put the background at the bottom and I'm going to add some text in there so you can see how it overlays. Um, is this one going to work? I think so. Whisper. And again, in a webinar like this, you're not going to be able to look at everything that we do and do it right away, but to know that those features are there, to slowly ease into it, that's the key. For any new piece of technology to keep learning, you have to start um, and just learn as you go along and learn from other people who are using it. So see what other people are producing and, and ask them, how did you do that? I'd like to be able to do that. Um, and that's part of being part of a great learning community. Are we on to exporting while I'm here? Is that a good choice right now? Yeah, I think that's probably the best. Okay, so uh, we're, we're still trying to uh, physically, so when you export a video, we there's something called a thumbnail, which means that's the picture that shows when your video is saved. Um, we are still trying to figure totally out how that actually works. And so the tip and trick we gave is we actually move your blue thing back to where um, you want it to be. And then you go back, I go up back up to save it and it says capturing thumbnail. So I always hope that it's going to work and it probably won't because I'm on live um, a webinar. So <laughs> done that. Um, at the you, do, you do want to select your own thumbnails because I have to show you the one that popped up for my auto thumbnail on a, on a video earlier today. Kelly and I laughed um, quite hard. It was not the most flattering image. So you definitely want to choose your thumbnail <laughs> wisely. So at the top right corner, you'll see the word finish. If you click finish, um, you're going to save your trial uh, by fire is what I call this. Save my title. I'm going to set that title. And then you'll see at the top, this is the thumbnail it's chosen. Sometimes it, it get, captures other thumbnails at the bottom and you can choose which one ever one you want. And that's the one that will be there. The one thing we need, uh, we want you to be aware of is a couple of things on this screen. 
it always sends you an email. So someone asked about sending it out to students. Once you get it in your email, you can always forward it on and it, it seems to work, no problem. The other thing that we, I always do is I always want it in my Google Drive. And so to do that, I just make sure the Google Drive is clicked so that way I can find it easily. And then what we've had troubles with, sometimes we create videos that aren't be, uh, marked as public, which means no one can access it and we get the kids going, we can't access the video. And so we have to go back in and we have just to make it public. So we all, I'm, we're always training ourselves just to make sure that's green at all times. Um, we just do standard quality because we, we're just doing school stuff. We don't need to anything. We're not doing a, a webinar with videos and stuff like that. Uh, we export the video. Um, we, uh, that's, I, I don't just export anything else. I just always export the video and it always comes with the audio. I name that and then I hit it, export. And then it just takes a little bit of time. It's a 19 second video, so it shouldn't take too long, but then it will send to my Google Drive. It takes a little bit, um, a couple minutes to get to your Google Drive so you can find it. Um, it comes to my email sooner than it does my Google Drive. Great. And if you just wanted to unshare your screen there, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I'm going to share what it looks like once it's finished um, exporting. So under we video, once it's finished, it'll give you a link. And once you click on that link, you can preview your own video to make sure that it came up. This little lock symbol uh, tells you if it's unlocked and you see it open just a little bit, it means that your privacy settings are shared and it's open. If for some reason you publish that video and that lock is all the way closed, that means nobody else is going to be able to use it, even if you give them um, the right URL or the right um, link to access it in your Google Drive. So just make sure that that's there. Um, you can download it directly to your computer. It's already saved in um, your Google Drive, like we said but you can directly share to Google Classroom right from here, which is really handy, it integrates well. I can choose which class I wanted to share it to. I can choose whether I'm gonna incorporate it as part of an assignment or whether I'm gonna ask a question. And then it also allows me to select which students do I wanna share it with, what question am I, am I gonna put here. I can do all of the things I would usually do. So if I wanted to schedule it to be released another day, I can do all of that directly from here, which is a nice integration. And, oh, I'm gonna see if I can sneak in here. You're also going to get an email that says your Wii video has exported, that it succeeded. And so as you open that up, again, that gives you access to that. So it will tell you, and especially if it's a longer video, it could take five, 10 minutes, um, or a little bit longer, depending on how long uh, you go in. When you're creating it here, anytime you're creating a new assignment, if you had that URL, um, so that website link, then you can just pop that into a link and that'll take them directly there. Or again, you can go into your Google Drive into that wee video file in order to attach it from there. So sharing, exporting is super helpful. Um, we also had somebody who was asking about accessing the library learning comments. And so someone was asking about just recording voices as well. Did we answer that question? Um, oh, if you're only doing, okay, so I will go into this one. If I just want to record my voice for something, I have the ability of only doing a recording. So under create new, where it says I can do a video or I can do a recording or I can create a GIF, a GIF um, you can choose which one of those you want to do. And so again, you can publish that just as an audio recording if you wish. Under the library learning commons, one of the things that we were learning from Elke yesterday in her presentation, you wanna make sure when you're logging in from home or if students are logging in from home, they log in and use their PAL. So I'm gonna put my own information in. And from here, if I wanted to use something in Tumble Books or Bookflix or TVO, um, I tend to use Overdrive a little bit more with the age group that I'm using. I can log on to the library website. Overdrive makes me log in again. Boy, does that make me glad that they switched to a 12 character password every single time. So um, simultaneous use books. Um, anybody can access them, access them at any time. If you're looking at the other books, if it's gray, if that little book up in the corner is gray, then it means that somebody else has it signed out, it's not available. 
that black means that it is available. So you can see on Beyond Magenta there that that one would be available for reading. Again, I'm going to go into Ada Twist Scientist just because I know that I already have that one available. And I'm going to go into Read. And it's going to pull it up on my screen for me. And so I can see that it's um, nice and big. It's easy for me to read and access. And so as that's loading, because I was doing my sample read aloud there, I'm going to just pull this back to the very beginning. And this is where, I, again, I would choose to do that read aloud. I would probably want my face in that one. And so I would record my screen and on my webcam. Oh, yeah, that it doesn't want to let me use my webcam because we're doing this seminar. Um, and then in doing that, so I will just do the screencast this time. I will choose the audio from my headset. And I will go to my library learning commons to that Ada Twist Scientist Overdrive so that that's all the students will see on my recording. And try again. There we go. So at this point, if I was doing the dual, I'd be looking at the camera, introducing the book. But now the pictures are already there. I'm not worrying about using my, my phone to take pictures of every uh, page in the book because this one happens to be there and the pictures are beautiful. I can record it as I'm reading. The students can see the pictures. We can demonstrate the strategies. And once again, when I'm done, I just click on stop. And over in Wee Video, it'll show my little preview that I can decide if I want to save it into my media files. So, yeah, some more questions here. You have to unmute yourself, Kelly. Someone asked about where to find your files. We video, as soon as you log in, it creates a we video folder within your Google Drive. And if you put it alphabetically, it's probably at the bottom. Um, but it's easy to find. Um, and even if you check recent, it'll always yeah. come as recent as well. Yeah, when I'm doing a lot of my publishing, that's usually what I do is it's always available in my most recent files. In answer to you, Elaine, it doesn't have to be simultaneous. We were just, we were playing with it yesterday and Amanda could read fast enough. And so what she did was she, she turned the, she would do one page, read it, one page, read it and narrate it. So that would help um, to make it easier. So is there, I think we're, that's the last of our slides. The export slide is on there. I've demonstrated that. Is there anything else that we missed, uh, Amanda? I think it's good. Our last slide here was just questions and how you're feeling. Someone Again. asked how to review how to make a thumbnail. Again, not all our thumbnails work. Sometimes our tip, tip and tricks. So I'm going to jump, kind of going to jump to the screen for just a second, Amanda. Um, creating a thumbnail. Um, the one that seems to be working best for me is I, I play where I want it to be on. So I, I move my blue mover, I call it whatever you want to call it. If I play it and I want whisper to be my, um, my thumbnail, I then go and save it right away. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And then I hit finish and then it will come up as one of the thumbnails. Hopefully if everything goes according to plan. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work though. And um, then I just keep playing. Yes, a lot of it. And so the reason I wanted Kelly alongside one, everything that we produce, we produce together. So I wanted to honor that in what we were sharing and how we were approaching it. But the other part is I actually dove in because of courses I was taking early on. Kelly only dove into this once we got into remote learning. She really didn't have the opportunity to play with it much before that. And so that's how intuitive it is. And especially if you Google something that you want to know how to do or reach out, the contact information is there, find a buddy, um, learn from each other. But it is intuitive, it is accessible, and it is board supported and accessible in our Chromebooks, which is fantastic. So thank you so much.
In answer to Janet's question, just before we leave, um, copyright, I'm not too sure about copyright. Most of our uh, publishers are welcoming our use of this in distant learning as long as we uh, acknowledge them. You'd have to check what the, uh, what the publisher's name is. I know Scholastic is as well as Schust uh, Simon & Schuster, as long as you get permission saying, I have permission to read. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Again, Thanks, grab that bit.ly slash we video relationships. And good luck, everybody. Uh, Kelly and Amanda, that was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I am a bit of a uh, video nerd when it comes to things. As you can probably tell, I have all my geek equipment stuff <laughs> and uh, I've been doing lots of editing. Um, on some more complex, uh, complex programs for my computer, but seeing some of the really some of the similar things from those super complex versions on something uh, online where you can use in a Chromebook is absolutely phenomenal um, because you know you can begin teaching those students our students those skills right from an early age. So um, it's great um, to be able to use these and, and to produce our own videos <laughs> for our asynchronous learning. Um, as much as possible. Um, just so everyone is aware, I am about to paste the link to where you will find uh, other webinars, but also the recording for this webinar. Give me some time, it has to download and then I have to upload it into Google Drive and I have to share it and it has to process and everything like that, but it should be there tomorrow. But um, thank you so much again, Kelly and Amanda. Um, and we hope we'll be able to continue offering these things in the near future. And thank you everyone who participated today. Um, Definitely appreciate it to see you taking a risk and trying some new things. Other than that, have a great day and uh, upcoming on the weekend. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye.